true success. I've been thinking a lot. I've been contemplating about this idea of true success and what it actually means because for every single person, the definition of success is very, very different. But it's crazy that we live in a world where the definition of success is generally related to or connotated with the idea of financial success. So you'll meet somebody and they've got a nice car, they've got a nice watch, they've got a nice house, they've got a good business and you're like, oh, that person's successful. And for a long period of time, I thought so as well because the way that I grew up is I grew up with my parents coming from Vietnam in the 1970s, escaping the war, and then them coming to Australia, working their butts off. They were like sewing clothes in the garage, raising six kids, and all they wanted to do was to get their kids educated. And so their definition of success was, hey, if I can get my kids a degree, if they can be a doctor, dentist, lawyer, yada, da 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 they will be successful. And so it was my idea of growing up, hey, if I actually just become a doctor, a dentist, a lawyer, whatever it is, if I graduate and get a degree, I will be successful. And so the idea of that went from, okay, I've got the degree now to, shit, I'm still not successful. Why don't I f feel successful at this stage in my life at 22? And then further from 22 to 28, it was like, oh fuck, well I need financial success. I need to be rich. I need to make money. I need to like buy houses. I need to buy nice cars. I, I need to, the definition of success all over, plastered all over Instagram. And at that time, you know, my ability to process things, comprehend things, reach inside of myself was nil to none. It was up until then. And how could it be? Because I had no experiences. I was still very young. My whole upbringing was not to lean into my own intuition. It was all about saying, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, yes, dad, yes, mum, yes to my teachers, a bit of a yes, man. And, and most Asians are like this, most immigrants, that we're, we're, so, we're so obedient. And it's because we're so afraid of what's gonna happen when we come home. Like we come home to a, a complete spanking, a whipping, like there's discipline, right? You come from like a country where there's, there's communism and, and people use, the, the sticks and the chopsticks and, and you know, shit's gonna happen if you don't follow the rules. So how can you de develop your own intuition to actually understand this idea of success? When I'm younger, I'm starting to think, all right, if I get a degree, I'll be successful. If I have a six pack, I'll be successful. If I have all these monetary things that people think, I'll be successful. And somewhere along the lines, I got the degree. I felt poor, I felt stupid, I felt lost because graduating as a physiotherapist coming out, I was making less money than I did as a personal trainer. I have a five year degree of debt that I need to pay back. I hate what I'm doing at the moment, by the way, in terms of like, I'm now in a room massaging necks, looking at mobility. It's just not the field that I wanna be in. And I didn't know at the time because we're following a yes pathway. So I quit and I start to figure out, I need to figure out how to make money. Personal training in the gym's good, but there's there's this thing, there's this like stigma around it. You know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm doing my parents a disservice. They don't wanna, they don't wanna tell their friends, my auntie, my uncle, that I'm, I'm a personal trainer in the gym. Like that's the last thing that they wanna say. That's like bum life. You, you have failed as an Asian if you have done that. So I'm trying to think, okay, well, what can I do? And so I start venturing inside of online marketing and, and all that stuff. I start an agency. This is back in like 2015 dental marketing, we sign on like 92 clients, I can't fulfill. And what I mean by I can't fulfill is the dentists aren't able to follow up on the leads, there's this whole issue and I just can't be dealing with that anymore. So I, I dropped that business and I'm like, I'm not gonna do, it, do this anymore. I escaped that business, I then venture into partnering up, opening a Pilates gym with, my, with a few of my business partners that I'm in a mastermind with. That works out for about six months. I then decide, fuck, there's just no money in this as well. So I'm, I'm like a, a business manager there. I then start an online fitness business, or at the time, I'm still like, I'm transitioning. So I've got this online fitness business and then I decide to go all in on that. And it, it's not you know until 2015, 2016 that that actually starts to take off. I start to see some money because it's all online. I'm making about 20, $25,000 a month training people that I took out from the gym and training people in Melbourne. And so it's not until like 2016, 2017 that I start to teach my model to fitness trainers that I start to go, oh my God, like this is, this is crazy. Things start to take off. So I essentially take my model and I teach other personal trainers how to do it. It's not from 2017 to 2020 that I'm like, holy crap, like this is where the model of success really begins. We start to sell $20 million of online, I run events, we start to tap into partnerships and, and all sorts of stuff. And then, uh, then I get to that place and I retire in 2020 after I have Ocean for two years. So I'm sitting down and I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to un unveil this definition of success. And so in that moment in time, you know, one of the hardest moments in my life was probably about 2018, where 
I'm making a lot of money. I'm, I'm finally like making my parents proud. I'm buying the house in Northgate and, and people are writing this big article and, and my dad's like, oh my God, my son's buying all this, these things. Look, he's so successful. But in that moment in time, there's something that doesn't happen. And it's really my relationship that, that are suffering around me. It's the relationship that I have with Kerry because I'm not actually connected with her. I think I'm giving her all the things, but basically because I'm on this thing that is not asking what is the definition of success for me, but I'm, I'm, I'm going along this journey. I'm almost like an NPC and a non-playable character just thinking that, hey, if I just make more money, I'll, I'll become more successful and like money can solve everything. And then I get to this point where we have a crack in our relationship and it all breaks down. And it all breaks down because she wants out. And I don't blame her. I don't blame her for wanting out because I can't even see the worldview. I'm so I'm so stuck in this idea. It's just you, you're going along this train and you're going at 100 miles an hour and you, you don't know how to get off. You don't know anything else exists and, and, and that's it. You're on this train. You're like, hey, like this is the thing. I have worked so hard for the last five, seven years to figure out this and we've figured out, we figured out this pattern and now I'm holding on to it for dear life. And so 2020 hits and we have ocean. And so my definition of success begins to shift again because now there's this other side to me that's starting to come out. It's the, the, the playful Lynn, the child Lynn, the kid Lynn, the boy Lynn that, that never got to be a little boy. Um, when I was growing up, I was the last of, I was the sixth kid. And I think when you're the sixth kid, your parents are just so fucking tired of like raising kids. They just, they, they, they pass you over to your siblings and they want you to like grow up. So, you know, you're, you're no longer a nuisance, you know, like, like you can become adult, you, you can become, you can, you don't disturb them, you, there's no more chaos. And so I just brought into this idea of like, you know, get older, get faster, get more mature. And so for the first time, I, I really get to activate another side of me. So there's this side of like 20 to 28 year old Lynn, that's like full business, full like, hey, full discipline. I haven't really developed my relationship aspect. To, yet I haven't re really developed my ability to emotionally connect with my partner, be vulnerable, listen, all of these things. It's all like uh, I'm building this 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 character, this side of me that's like all business, all driven, all le like leadership or, or what I think is leadership at the time. 2020 hits and then I build this other side. So I retire, completely shut off that side for two years. Go go underground and just just sit sit down because it's the very first time that I actually get to sit down and comprehend what I get to do with my life. And I, I feel very extremely lucky that... I got to do this. I was in a place to do this. And, and I'm extremely grateful for everything that I've experienced up until this point, because without that, I wouldn't have, I, I wouldn't be here today and be who I am. And so in a long winded way, I get to develop this other persona, this, uh, this, this boy, the boy Lynn, the, the boy that wanted to be loved and, and the boy that could really connect with Ocean and really connect with Kerry and, and Kerry started to see another side and she fell in love with this and I fell in love with her. And it was like, oh my God, me and Kerry are having a better relationship now than ever after having kids and it's really crazy because in my experience people that have kids generally um, disconnect further because there's more chaos there's more drama they got along really well when they were like dating because they would go out to the clubs they'd party they travel together they had all these good times and then they have this kid and it's now the kid kind of like feels like it ruins their life in a way i had the opposite experience i had the hey i'm gonna um I'm going to be successful and, and me and Kerry didn't have a great relationship. We had a good relationship by all means. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't great. It just wasn't like filled with fun times. My focus was literally, hey, how do I, how do I become as successful as possible? And hers was, her value was, how do I travel the world? How do I have freedom? How do I just explore? How do I have fun? How do I live in my 20s, right? And so we have a kid and he brings us closer than ever. And the craziest part about this is my, my, my perceptions are beginning to change. And this is, this is so important that as a, as a man, I truly believe like the definition of success is to find your own definition, is to tap into your own intuition. And to only tap into your own intuition is you have to go out there and you have to play around with ideas. You have to play around with the idea that like, hey, is having a six pack successful? And for a lot of people, they think being in shape, having a six pack, being 3%, 6% body fat successful. But and, until you've played around with that idea, you start to recognize that no. And, and, and I used to be a bodybuilder. Like I grew up in the gym, being PT, competing in bodybuilding. I was 6%. I was fucking miserable. I was eating chicken breast and broccoli. I was like anti-social as fuck. All I wanted to do was cardio gym and tracking my macros. And that just, that wasn't successful to me. Like it wasn't. There was just something about that that I, I just, I know that that's a, an, that's a very self-obsessed life at least i felt that way right it's very admirable and the work and the dedication and the sacrifice is, is completely there but when it comes down to that that i would not look at having six percent 
bodybuilding limb being successful. Nor would I be looking at the Lin that's doing six million dollars a year inside of his business, that Lin is successful too. Most people thought, I could, and, and that's the crazy part, most people on the outside would look at Lin, the bodybuilder, and go, oh my god, he's so ripped, I want to be like him, right? Or the guy that's running this six million dollar coaching company and, and going, man, that's the guy that's success, successful, I want to be like him. Most people on the outside are, are driven by this paradigm because they haven't actually played around with the idea. And the, the most important thing I need you to understand today, or I wish if, if there's something that I can bring across to you is that you have to play around with ideas. You have to go, hey, like if you think that getting lean and getting fit is gonna help you become successful and getting a six pack, you have to go out and do it and test that for yourself so that you can finally know. If you think that getting rich is going to make you more successful and it's gonna fill your cup, then you actually have to go and do it. And you can't sit in a place where you have to forever wander. So I got to this point where it's 2020 and by all means, I'm not rich. But I, I've just got a lot more money and I have a lot more freedom and flexibility to be able to go, okay, well, we can go to the supermarket and buy shit without really worrying. We can go to a restaurant and, and pay for shit without really worrying. We can go and afford to live in a nice apartment, penthouse, wherever we were like, boom, da da da. And I think that is where most people want to get to. And so un until I get to that place, I'm like, okay, well, this is, this is okay. This is cool. What I started to recognize was that in 2020, it was like, it was a building of the relationships, my relationships with my kids, Ocean per se, who, who, who am I to her? At the, at the very time, I had no idea because she was so little. So it was really my relationships, being a dad, brought on the relationships with my parents, brought on the relationships with Kerry's parents, brought on the relationships with Kerry herself. Kerry and I actually grew really close and, and so tight and, and we developed this relationship just from this common goal. This common thing that brought us together was amazing. You know, as I as I kind of share this to move forward, I know I'm ranting and I know this is maybe not a video that you want to watch from me, but I think it's an important video because the definition of success will change over time and you have to tap into your own intuition to understand what success is. So when I move over to, to having kids and I have Atlas and it's the best thing in the world because I'm just sleeping with him, I feel connected. It's the second kid for me. Like when I had Atlas, it was like, oh my God, my, my duty as a father really stepped up. Where, where, when I had Ocean, Kerry did so much of the work, I, I just felt like, oh yeah, being a fucking father is easy. Like, <laughs> what's everyone complaining about? It's the easiest thing in the world. It's not until kid number two that I really had to step in because Kerry really needed help. And so that's when I really developed my fatherhood skills, my parenting skills, at least for me in my personal experience. My definition of success is not being the richest person in the world, but not having your relationships. It is also not being the fittest person in the world, but also like, you know, just because I have a six pack or, or whatever that I'm fit, but not having the my, my relationship. My the, the definition of success is actually being able to bring up the people around me and, and do it with the people around me. So do it with... Um, my kids do it with my wife do it with hopefully my parents as I'm trying to like fix those wounds and, and reconnect and find that place where you know that the whole idea is wouldn't it be so lovely to be able to like be successful be financially successful make more money and help the people around you and so I, I'm really giving that a bit of a um, a tinker at the moment that's an idea that I'm playing around with can I be successful and, and yes can I make money but also like maintain my relationship with care and my kids and have fun with them every single day can I stay in shape but not like obsessively in shape but just stay fit and, and active a more athletic physique because I'm playing sports now I, I'm, I'm back into tennis and it's something that I, I used to play as a kid and now I really want to take it up and, and can I have this multi-dimension um, my multi-dimensional aspect to my life in terms of sports, in terms of music, in terms of being able to travel, in terms of being able to make money, in terms of being able to um, have a deep and intimate connection with my wife and where I feel like we're just complete best friends and with my kids where we're just best friends as well and they're, they're not, they don't feel like a nuisance because I'm not just throwing them away. You know, I think back to what the Lynn in 2019, a couple of years ago when I was running my business, I would have just got nannies in and I would have just gone, okay, well, let's just systemize and outsource and delegate the kids to somebody else and let me focus on this. And I, I, I feel like that's a very one-dimensional person. And so where am I going with this? The, the, where am I going with this is the fact that your definition of success will change over time. You don't know what you don't know until you start doing stuff. And, and when you start doing stuff and when you start testing out ideas and when you start playing with ideas, then you truly start to understand what you do like and what you don't like. You know, the Lin, when he was 18 to 24, was 
fit, very healthy, very in shape bodybuilder mentality. Did I feel successful? Absolutely not. Did people think that, oh my God, I want to look like him. Like he's the moral model. Yes, they did. It's fucking crazy. I know they did. Then comes along the Lin that isn't so fit anymore. He gains a little bit in a way, puts on five, 10 kilos because I'm now striving for financial success. And I've got the house, I've got the business and people are looking at me and the, the people around me are going, oh my God, I want to be like him. Was I successful at the time? Absolutely not because my relationships were falling apart. If you're thinking about asking Kerry, like this is the craziest part, ask, ask, ask Kerry, ask the people around you that know you the most um, what they'll say about you in that moment in time. And, and chances are business people, a lot of them, their parents and their kids and, their, and the people closest don't think a lot about them. And then there's this third aspect when you begin to have kids and you start to test around and play around with these ideas. The definition of success for me right now is being able to pull everybody that's closest to me and helping them rise and, and maintaining that. It's it's not reaching, it's it's keeping this core and expanding on it. It's not so much like reaching for more money. It's reaching for more, mon mo more money with the people around me. It's reaching for more fitness with the people around me. It's having more experiences with the people around me. Um, and, and it's very relationship driven. Now, I am definitely not perfect by any means. I've got, um, I've got heaps of uh, issues and areas where I need to improve on. One big area of mine is rekindling and, and figuring out how I can rekindle a relationship with my parents, my dad, figuring out, you know, letting go of all that anger, that resentment, that chip on my shoulder and being able to bridge that gap to, 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 to go, how, how do we reconnect? Because I'm such a different person from him and we have had different experiences. But how do we actually build that respect? Something for me is that I would like to build on and improve on is can I, can I, regardless of how I think about my dad, can I unequivocally give him the respect because he's my dad? And that's something that I'm currently working through. And I feel like if I can work through that, there's this thing that opens up for me where it's like, wow, like, man, you were able to build a business, you're able to make money, you're able to stay fit, you're able to have a great family, you're able to like mend relationships with the people that matter the most to you. That's kind of the next journey of where I'm on and that's the definition of success to me, like if I'm, I'm able to do that. And you know, when I see people that, and, and how you know this to be true is because you stop becoming envious of other people. Like when I, I, there are way more people that have way more money than me and yet I don't find envy in it. I don't, I don't find it because at, the, at that moment in time, I know for me to attempt to achieve that level of success, there is a big sacrifice that I'm not willing to make. And I know I'm not willing to make it. There are people that are way more fitter than me. They look phenomenal and I'm not envious. I respect it. I go, oh my God, that's amazing. But I'm not envious because I know I'm not willing to make the sacrifice, the time, the energy, the effort, because I'm not willing to give up what I have. And so when you get to this place where you have a really good, you have a stable life, you have great relationships, you are able to make money and you're just cruising through life, the next thing is to try to expand and, and grow it without giving anything up because you know what you truly value. Anyway, I hope in that long-winded rant that you found something useful for that inside of you. It's okay if you don't know what you want at this moment in time. You may be growing up, you may have had parents like me, you may have just been a yes person your whole life and now you're starting to go, hold on a second, I've listened to the blueprint of every single person around me and my life is still, I'm still lost, I'm still confused. And yes, you're still lost and you're still confused because you have not built intuition, that little, that little thing inside of you to go, hey, what do you want? Because you've just been listening to everyone else. And so the idea here is to play out these ideas. Play out, get really rich, work really hard for two years, figure out where your life is then and ask yourself, do you like it? If you like it, fantastic, fuck, that's, that's your definition of success, it fits in there. But if you're getting it at the risk of your health, if you're making so much money but you're not healthy and you don't recognize this in your 20s because you think you're invincible, but by the time you hit your 40s, you know, you start to see people getting cancer. Like there's a conversation around me where I'm starting to see like, there are people around me getting cancer and it's a real thing, it hits your heart. There are conversations in your 30s and your 40s and your 50s, I'm sure, that become different and life hits you in a different way. In your 20s, everybody's invincible. Everyone's just out there partying, you know, doing amazing shit, life's looking really positive. I'm 34 and right now there's conversations of people around me having cancer, they're having kids, kids are, kids are growing up, their father died in a car accident, heart attack, yada, da da da. That's crazy shit. So it makes you actually start, start to stop and recognize life in itself for a, a second and how, how small we are. Anyway, I'm gonna leave you with this. What is your definition of success?
and and truly what is it for you and i'm sure if you already know then it's okay but if you don't know also understand that it's okay that you don't know because you haven't built that intuition you haven't thrown around these ideas you may have a lot of assumptions but maybe you need to get really fit to recognize that maybe that's not the definition of of success Maybe you just want to be athletic and you play sport and like move so you don't feel so heavy all the time. Maybe you want to get really rich, but in a way where it's like you're very intentional about the way that you make your money, where you're working three to four hours a day. And that's the constraint that you give yourself. And you'd rather not work 16 hours a day. I know for a fact I would rather not work 16 hours a day. I'd love to work three to four hours a day. I know I need to work three to four hours a day, but that's the constraint I give myself. I know for me, my definition of success is having experiences with my family. Because as I think about it right now, the only thing I look back on are the experience. The only thing I remember uh, as, as moments when I was in Denmark with the family or when I was living in Paris with Kerry and, and we had to figure out how to talk um, French and, and, you know, I had to learn how to order croissants and, and, and those are the best experiences. Those are the, I wouldn't say the best, but those are the things that I actually remember. Whereas the day to day, you just don't remember. And so something that is really important to me now that I couldn't have given a fuck about five years ago, our experiences, because it's a thing that it's my memory of the kids and the memory, it's a moment in time that we can look back on and talk about. So with that being said, I'll leave that with you. Um, hopefully you found this valuable. I think it's uh, I think it's a really good time to, to start to recalibrate with so much social media online, so many people posting different things, showing you different shiny objects, and you growing up, you know, Maybe you were a yes person listening to all your teachers, your parents, yada, da, 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 and, and you thought that, hey, if I listen to them, I'll be successful, but you're a little bit lost along the way. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you thought about this video and if there's anything you want to discuss. What is your definition of success? And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.